I'm spilling trade secrets today. I'm sharing 13 sneaky ways to take your bedroom from boring to beautiful on a budget. All of these things you can probably achieve for under $100 or you can achieve them using things you already own without spending a dime. And of course, I'm sharing the very best secret for last, so be sure to stay till the end of the video. Let's start with bed positioning. A mistake I see people make all the time is they place their bed directly across from the door. Now, this is a real issue if you live in a narrow room. What you want to do instead is actually place your bed perpendicular to the door if you have a narrow room. If you don't have a narrow room, go ahead and skip this one, but it's very important in this situation. As you can see here, when we have this this very narrow and long bedroom, putting the bed right across from the door makes it feel like the room is very short because the bed takes up all available space. There's really no natural space then to put a dresser or an accent chair. When you actually place that bed perpendicular to the door like we've done here, you can see that the room feels a lot more open and there's a more natural place for a dresser, a faux plant, a chair, and pretty much everything else you want to add to your bedroom. Now, if you have a really nice big space, again, that one doesn't matter for you, but next we need to talk about a rug placement and sizing. I want you to head to your bedroom and look at your rug. If your rug is parallel to your bed, you have got it wrong. Your rug should not be parallel to your bed. Your rug should be perpendicular to your bed. They should be forming a cross with one another. If they are not doing that, you've done one of two things wrong. One, you've actually just put it in the wrong orientation or two, your rug is too small. When it comes to a king size bed, you can have an eight by 10, nine by 12 or 10 by 14 rug. The only caveat to that is if you decide you want to use runners. You can actually get away with two two by six foot runners next to your king size bed if you can't afford a really big one. So for a queen size bed though, you can have a six by nine, eight by 10 or nine by 12. You could in theory get away with a 10 by 14 rug, but it's really expensive and very unnecessary. And you might feel like the rug is swallowing up the room. For a full, you want a five by eight, six by nine or eight by 10. And for a twin, you want a five by eight or six by nine. Those are the standard rules for rug sizing depending upon the size of your bed. You always want to take the size of the room into consideration when you're choosing your rug size. So you might want to push the upper limits of rug size if you have a really big room and go to the lower limits if you have a really small room. The third way to instantly upgrade your bedroom has to do with your pillow arrangement. I see people overstyle all the time, but there are actually formulas you can follow to have the perfect pillow arrangement on your bed that doesn't feel overbearing, is easy to sleep with, and isn't too harsh on your wallet. For a king size bed, you can do three 26 by 26 pillows, two 20 by 36 pillows, and one 12 by 48 inch pillow. You could also do three 26 by 26 inch pillows, two 20 by 36 inch pillows, and then two 20 by 20 pillows. Or you could do four 20 by 36 inch pillows and two 12 by 20 inch pillows. For a queen size bed, it's pretty similar. We're just using a queen size sleeping pillow as opposed to a king one. So you could do two 20 by 30 inch pillows, two 26 by 26 inch pillows, and one 12 by 36 inch pillow. You could also do two 26 by 26 inch pillows, two 20 by 30 inch pillows, two 20 by 20 inch pillows, and one 12 by 20 inch pillow. For a full size bed, I recommend four 20 by 26 inch pillows and two 18 by 18 inch pillows. For a twin, I recommend two 20 by 26 inch pillows and one 12 by 20 inch pillow in either of these two arrangements. If you follow these formulas for your pillow arrangements, like I said, you won't feel like you're overstyling anymore and you'll actually be able to sleep alongside your pillows instead of tripping over them in the middle of the night. If you want to upgrade your bed instantly, you'll want to break the bed into thirds. When you're decorating, you want to decorate the top third of the bed with pillows, the second third of the bed with your duvet cover, there shouldn't be anything else there, and then the last third of the bed should have a quilt or throw. You want to break your bed up into segments so that you have three different portions that you are experiencing and tell a different story. Oftentimes people leave tons of pillows at the top of the bed and nothing at the bottom of the bed and there's just like a lot of clutter on the bed and it feels kind of empty towards the end. So if you only allow pillows in the first third of the bed, you will prevent yourself from overstyling. And if you put a quilt or throw in the last third of the bed, you will feel like your bedroom design comes together a little bit more because you're able to incorporate more colors and textures which give the really luxurious look. Now I've thrown a lot of formulas at you and if you're finding them helpful, be sure to smash that subscribe button because like I said, I'm bringing more formulas to you each and every week and you want to make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm saving the best one for last. Next, we're going to talk about nightstands. Your nightstand size is everything, but first and foremost, we're going to talk about nightstand height. When you're choosing a nightstand for your bed, regardless of what the size bed you have, you want to make sure that your nightstand is actually the same level as the top of your mattress or the top of your mattress topper. Reason being, you want to be able to reach out from your mattress and keep your arm completely level and be able to grab medication, a drink, or whatever it is you have on your nightstand. Oftentimes people have nightstands that are entirely 
entirely too low and you find yourself kind of feeling around for things in the middle of the night it shouldn't be that way so what you want to do is grab your tape measure and measure to the top of your mattress and that is all you need to do you want to find a nightstand that is about the same height plus or minus four inches now once we have the nightstand height figured out we need to talk about width so there are general width rules depending upon the size of bed you have and i'm going to run through them right here if you have a king size bed you want your nightstand to be greater than two feet in size so two feet or greater is ideal if you have a queen size bed your nightstand should be between 21 inches and 28 inches wide if you have a full size bed your nightstand should be between 18 and 24 inches wide and if you have a twin size bed your nightstand should be less than 21 inches unless you're using one nightstand for two twin beds in one room in which case it can be a little bit larger and you might want to use a king size nightstand in that case and the same thing goes for rugs if you have chosen a nightstand that is very large and it doesn't fit in your space because your space is smaller just go on the lower end of the range for your nightstand size having a nightstand that's the right size not only makes your bedroom look better but it also allows you to exist better in your bedroom because you have more nightstand and table space now that we know what size nightstands we have we have to talk about what goes on the nightstand having an overcluttered nightstand is such a nightmare but i'm going to teach you how to break it down just like we did with our bed we want to break our nightstand into thirds so the first third or the third that is closest to the bed you are going to leave entirely empty um, you want to make sure that you have space for medications water whatever it is you want to use at nighttime the following two thirds you can put whatever you want on there i recommend leaving one third for decor and the other third for lighting now if you want to have more decor on your nightstand what you want to do is actually eliminate the lighting from your nightstand and put it up on the wall this is when you would use a sconce or something like that to provide a lighting so that you can reclaim nightstand space then once we have decorated our nightstands we also want to decorate the wall behind the nightstand because we never want to leave it blank unless we have a more minimalist style so if we're mounting something above our nightstand if that is a piece of art or something like that we want to nest it with that nightstand however if you are choosing to do really tall decor on your nightstand and that decor is staying there all of the time you can shift your artwork up a little bit more we want to make sure that we can actually experience the artwork and it doesn't get lost behind the decor but we do want to nest it so put it within three to five inches same thing goes with art above your bed you want to nest it so you want it to be within three to five inches of your headboard and if you don't want to get out your tape measure which is totally fine you can just grab your hand and you normally want it to be a hand's distance away from the top of your headboard if you have a really low headboard and you find that you sit upright in bed a lot and your back is already hitting the wall you want to shift your art upwards so that your head is not coming in contact with the art but again it all depends on the type of headboard that you have when we are decorating above our beds we want to make sure that our art is taking up between one half and three quarters of the space that is above our bed i prefer to do two thirds it's a really nice sweet spot in between the two of those but anything between one half and three quarters the size of the bed will work now that is a measurement for one big piece but it also works for smaller pieces so say you want to do three pieces and you have a bigger headboard you're just going to take the size of your headboard divide it by um, 0.5 or 0.75 or 0.67 you're going to get that number and then you will just use that number to calculate how big each individual piece can be it really is that simple when you have art that is too small above your bed it makes it feel like you have a proportion issue because you do and it just ruins the overall design when you have a piece of art that is too big, it swallows up the room and it's very, very distracting and it can be very overbearing. Plus your wall can't always accommodate things like that and it sometimes poses a little bit of a hazard. Now that we've taken care of the bed, which is the most important part of the bedroom, we want to talk about lighting because bedroom lighting is super important. So when we're thinking about overhead lighting, we need to think about size and we need to think about height. So when it comes to the height of your overhead lighting, you wanna make sure that your chandelier or your light fixture does not extend below seven feet seven feet is a safe spot because if you have someone really really tall unless you have an NBA player no one's going to hit their head but if it goes lower than seven feet you might be posing a hazard so what you want to do is you want to take the height of your ceiling you want to subtract seven feet and the amount of space you have left is the amount of wiggle room you have for your chandelier height now if you have really low ceilings I would probably say skip out on the chandelier altogether and use some type of like inset can light or puck light or something like that so no one can risk hitting their heads just because you're using a can light doesn't mean it can't be interesting you can use really cool light bulbs like Philips Hue light bulbs to really help create um, a really good sense of mood 
Now, when we're talking about chandelier width and length for the bedroom, listen up because this formula is super useful and it's a little bit complicated. What you wanna do is you wanna take the length and width of your room. So say you have 16 feet by 16 feet. You're going to add those two numbers together and you get 32. But instead of saying it's 32 feet, you're just going to grab the inches unit and you're gonna tack it on there. You're not converting anything, you're just tacking inches onto the feet, right? We're getting rid of the feet, we're tacking on the inches and that number is 32. 32 is the ideal diameter that you would choose for your chandelier. Of course you can go up, but I would never go down from that number. You'd rather have a chandelier be too big for a room as opposed to too small, especially when it comes to a bedroom. In terms of chandelier placement in the room, you can either center the chandelier over the bed or you could center the chandelier in the room. It's totally up to you, but I prefer to center it in the room because lots of us move our spaces around all the time, so that's just a pro tip. Now the very best tip is coming at the end of this video and it isn't a formula at all, which is really useful because I'm sure you're tired of doing math, but this comes down to curtains. When you're in the bedroom, you want your curtains to be six inches above the window frame. It can be taller than that, but at least six inches. You only have to give me six inches. When it comes to width from the window frame, you also only have to give me six inches. So all you have to do is remember the number six. This is going to help your window frame look larger and taller, and it's six inches on either side, so 12 inches total, right? So if you give me the six inches on either side of the window frame and six inches above, I promise you, I promise you, the window is going to look a lot larger and taller than it actually is, and it's going to really open open up the space. It is a really, really, really minor change that makes a huge impact. And I know that it can be expensive to buy new curtains, which is why it only said six inches. A lot of the time you can just let out the hem of your existing curtains and use the ones you already have in your existing brackets and just shift them up a bit and you're able to achieve that look for less. Now I just threw a ton of math at you, but all of those basics are the foundation of a beautiful, luxurious bedroom. If you're following all these rules, your bedroom is going to inherently look luxurious even if you haven't spent a ton of money. Let me know down in the comments which of these tips you knew about before and which are brand new to you and drop any of your other bedroom questions down below because in the next video I'm going to talk more about making your bedroom look super luxe on a budget. If you liked today's video please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and I will see you next time and follow along for part two.